Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's build our own mobile uh, effects panel using an Intel Compute Stick. These sticks have been around for some years now, and they're perfectly capable of running multiple VST plugins on batteries. So, they're perfect for a mobile setup of your favorite effects. Let's dig into that now. Here we go. Let's begin with the hardware setup. You'll need a compute stick. The more RAM, the better. This stick here has 2GB of RAM, which is sufficient for this project. This mini USB hub is helpful for connecting your audio interface and the MIDI controller, but if your audio interface has a MIDI input, you won't need it. I'm using a really cheap USB audio interface here, which has two 3.5mm audio jacks, and I'll plug in my guitar and later synth directly into this. And you'll need a MIDI controller with some freely assignable knobs and buttons. If you don't have one, the Cognano controller is the cheapest and certainly not the worst controller. And that's it. Now I'll just plug in my guitar and later the synth using a 6.35mm to 3.5mm adapter cable. And now let's boot that stick and set up the VST plugins. So, after booting, please install ASIO for all. This is a free ASIO driver, which will help you reducing audio latency. Link is in this video's description. Now let's install the VST host software. This is a small program written by Hermann Zeib. Link is in this video's description. Be sure to download the correct version. My PC stick runs Windows Home Edition 32-bit, so we'll need the 32-bit version of this, and we'll also need 32-bit VST plugins. Should that app not run in your native language, you can edit its start menu entry by right-clicking its icon, then show file location, then right-click once again and edit properties. Now add slash no local to the launch command, and now the software should display an English user interface. Now launch the app and go to Devices Wave and make sure ASIO for all is selected there. And for this video, I'm going to use Valhalla Supermassive, which is a great sounding free delay plugin. Link is in this video's description. Download that and drop it somewhere into your file system. Then press File, New Plugin and VST Host and load that DLL file. Let's take a look at our MIDI controller's configuration now. In my example, Korg has an app for editing that. Keep that app open to look up the controller numbers and we're going to need that now to assign the knobs to the VST plugin controls. So for example, the first knob is sending on controller 86. In the VST host software, press that first cogwheel icon in the upper part of the window. You're now presented with a table list of controllers. Right click the left column of the first table row and select CC, which is an abbreviation continuous controller. In the second column, select the number we just looked at previously, 86. In the parameter column, select the first control mix. Now you can control the loudness of the delay effect by turning the first knob. I'll continue assigning 10 knobs and sliders to all the available controls. Ok, I have assigned one knob or slider to each control of this delay effect, and now I'll use some of the buttons on the Nano control to switch between the delay engines. The buttons are beginning at 87, so I'll assign them to mode, and I will increment the control change by dot .1 for each button. Now, if I press the buttons next to the sliders, this will switch delay modes. And the last thing I want to set up is a program switch. The VST host app will store each plugin setup in a program slot. So, for example, I have this simple delay setup here, but I also have a setup with an amp simulator, delay and reverb, and I want to switch between these two setups by pressing buttons. So, in VST host, press the devices menu, then MIDI, and then open the remote control port tab. My forward and backward button on the Nano control are on 43 and 44 here, and I'll assign them to next performance and previous performance. And that's it for the MIDI setup. 
And next, open up the ASIO for all app by clicking its taskbar icon and then make sure the buffer size is as small as possible. This will reduce the audio latency of your system. And the last thing we need to do now is to set up auto start. In Windows 10, right click the Windows button, click run and then enter shell colon startup and press OK. A folder will open and now press the start menu button and just drag that VST icon into this folder. And that's it. We now have a low latency, battery powered hardware VST host you can control relatively easily with some knobs and buttons and most importantly without a screen. It takes around 30 seconds to one minute to boot the system and it's quite stable. And here's one more demo with the Cassisons arcade and guitar. Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting and useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And um, yeah, you can also download my sound sets for various synthesizers on gumroad.com, somewhere here or here. And uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.